Hey, John, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I do feel like like James should be doing this interview. <laughs> as <he> just... <laughs> but um, no, I, I suppose like one of the first areas, yeah, we wanted to discuss was um, was your 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 transition from comic books into film. So you were originally uh, working for Lethargic Comics, and um, how, how did how did it work going from one medium into the other? Well, um, I I was also an elementary school teacher throughout both of those, mm. and what happened was um, a, as the comics were getting uh, a, a little more difficult to um, be a part of and get out there, um, I slowly moved away and uh, I was still looking for some kind of creative outlet. So for a while, I just started doing um, background work um, Mm -hmm. because it was still at least connected to something entertaining and fun. And and that eventually led into uh, work and roles and other things. Yeah. And then then that kind of what inspired you to start like working on your your own things? Like you got to you got Ouija Shark 2 coming out. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I watched the, um, the trailer for the first, the first movie, and I'm desperate to watch it now because it looks like exactly my thing, my kind of cup of tea. <laughs> so how, how did that come about? Um, well, I, I did background for years, and then um, I ended up in a few different zombie movies just because they happened to be filmed in the Toronto area. Yeah, And then um, I started specifically looking for zombie movies because it was a lot of fun. And I I found a bunch and and appeared in those. And then after a while, I kind of got a little antsy waiting Mm -hmm. for roles to show up and for for things to happen. So I I just started filming my own stuff and uh, eventually some of it got out there. And what, what about the idea for, for Ouija Shark? Where did that come from? <laughs> well, Ouija Shark um, came from Wild Eye Releasing. The, the, yeah. um, the actual um, distributor came up with um, the title and the concept. Uh, then there was a first movie that was directed by Scott Patrick, uh, mm-hmm. Brett Kelly, and then I was asked to do this second film. Yeah. So um, it, it was one of those, it just kind of worked out my way at the end. And, and is it, is it complete now? Is it, has it, or are you still filming it at the moment? Yeah. The, the second movie has been complete since January and okay. uh, now it's in the hands of the distributor and some cool stuff is starting to happen. Cool. And um, you mentioned working, wanting to do a lot of uh, a lot of zombie movies and things like that. But uh, I uh, I can see that you worked uh, you worked with for well with George Romero, and also Lloyd Qu- uh, Kaufman. So what was it like getting to work with some of your your film film heroes, cinematic heroes? Well, it's fantastic. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons I started doing background is so I could get on set and and see or meet people like. Sylvester Stallone and Robin mm. Williams and uh, eventually uh, George Romero and Lloyd Kaufman as well. So um, with with uh, George, I remember on the set of Land of the Dead, um, I had a mask because we were doing this underwater deal where we were going in water and out of water. Mm-hmm. And he was giving us instructions about, you know, how to be a good zombie. And I'm all excited because you know here here's you know my hero telling me about how to be a zombie and it's so muffled inside the mask i'm like oh no i can't hear anything he's saying so you just shake your head a lot and hope you do it right (laughs) that's that's it that's an interesting idea zombies underwater i don't think i've seen that film uh but that's 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 a really cool idea for a zombie movie was that it was it was weird because of the um uh the mask i was wearing would a fill up with water and it was sealed at the neck so we yeah. come out of the water and uh you'd still be underwater inside the mask it, it was it doesn't sound it, very very safe no, it was not fun <laughs> oh, the, i mean this is something that i i'm a massive uh i'm a massive zombie fan as well i love i love my zombie movies and um 
when when uh, when James told me we were going to get to interview, I did I that did come up. I was thinking, what I wonder what your favorite zombie movie is. I don't really want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I for years I would have said the original Dawn of the Dead. I, I love it still. Uh, it's just I don't know why the Day of the Dead, the follow up from the mid '80s. Yeah, there's some, there's something about that one. It's got a certain polish, a certain real end of the world kind of feel to it that uh that's currently my favorite but i bounce back and forth between those two there but i mean i think mine is for some uh, before i probably would have said Shaun of the dead was one of my favorites uh just because i like the uh this is something that you obviously going going to be doing a bit with uh, ouija shark is uh is the blending of comedy and horror i do think it's a perfect blend um, but then I watched a, a film recently called Train to Busan, um, mm. which which I I was just blown away by that one. The sequel wasn't as good, but the first one I, I really really did love. And uh, yeah. I was wondering if you, you you must have checked that one out, right? Yeah, I haven't seen the sequel, but the first one I've seen, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's nice to see that after all these years, someone can still come up with some pretty cool ideas around the zombie genre. He's using a Ouija board to control a shark. We better get moving. Yeah, I've I've uh, directed um, a, n- a number of feature films, um, a- including um, Creature from Cannibal Creek and Poltergeist Encounters, Exorcism of the Dead, uh, the Friday Night Death Slot, and uh, and uh, Curse of the Bloody Voodoo Sock Puppet. <laughs> How do you come up with these names? <laughs> They're incredible. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's kind of it, it it's kind of the the thing in in indie movies. You know, you you have to kind of grab people by the throat sometimes. Yeah, that that is that they're brilliant. Oh, that I I am um, okay. We we are definitely going to host some sort of uh, screening of some of your movies on small screen because they sound be awesome. absolutely brilliant. But what what was it like for uh, like your first, what what would you say to people that are trying to do their first feature length films um in the industry? What what do you think is the like one of the big pieces of advice you could give people? I I think a lot of people give up because they have um big ideas that they can't quite express on film and and then they get frustrated and give up. I would yeah. say that they should start with things that are um familiar to them so you know think of locations that you have access to think of props that you have access to and you know make a story around that rather than try to um you know come up with something big the very first time and Mm. and then you'll have a pleasant experience and you'll probably get done I mean that that's one of one of the things that I mean I I did I've never actually worked on feature length films I've worked on a couple of shorts and it definitely it definitely is something that you you have to kind of make do with what you can find, and yeah. uh, it's uh, <laughs> that's something that we found out the hard way, as opposed yeah. to spending a lot of money on props and things. But yeah, that's well. Uh, that's... In, in uh, Creature from Cannibal Creek, um, I, I have a friend who owns uh, uh, kind of some land on, uh, you know, uh, like kind of like a reserve land where there's there's you know preserved trees and such. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went there and he was like, well, let's take a look at this. Maybe we can shoot a movie here. Oh, look, we got a big a- empty barn, a oh, barn check. And, mm-hmm. and, and here's a, here's a, a electrified fence area. Like, oh, electrified fence. Good, good. <laughs> and just, I mean, all of it gets worked into the movie. Right. So yeah, yeah you, you got to kind of go with what you have. <laughs> that's, that's a very good point. Cause it's like, uh, Especially with a zombie movie, an electrified fence would uh, would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what one of the things we noticed uh, with we uh, with Ouija Shark Two was that it's a, that the franchise is apparently very popular in Japan. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Do you know why? <laughs> yeah, I I think it's uh, first of all I think it's sharks in general. Yeah. They they do like their shark movies there, and. For whatever reason, um, at the at the end of the first Ouija Shark, I, I did a scene where um, I'm dead and I'm floating up in the heavens somewhere, and I have this little battle with 
the shark and the shark ends with me doing this mystic shield thing and it's very doctor strange tarot force for whatever reason it, it really caught their attention there and um when we went to do the second movie we kind of I, I i did anyway i looked very carefully at what they were talking about on twitter what they liked about the first movie and you know i i I tried to fulfill the that that desire of what they wanted to see for this one. And are you going to do anything special for for the release in Japan? Um, the the release in Japan is um, already s- such a big deal and um, so beyond me. Like I have I have nothing to do with it really. What happened was um, Kama Vision, the distributor in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, decided that they would take a chance on doing a theatrical release there. Cool. And so um, on August 4th, uh, it, will, it will play in a theater in Japan. And um, what, what they did to kind of build up, because they're really marketing geniuses down there. Yeah. And what, what, what they did was um, they, they sold T-shirts and they told people who bought the t-shirts if uh um that they would also get their name in an end roll at the end of the movie so when the movie ends there's a second set of credits that are just the names of all the people that bought shirts Mm -hmm. well that that went crazy and they sold like 200 shirts and then um they added you can have a mystic shield button to put on the shirt and that's free if you buy the shirt and then everyone went nuts and said, you know, maybe I, I should have two shirts so I can have two Mystic Shields. <laughs> and then they, they went one further and uh, asked me to, um, I shot an interview for them here at home that they mm-hmm. could show at the end of the movie. Um, I filmed some commercial material for them that they can show to promote the, mo- uh, to promote the movie. Hey, it's Japan. And what ended up happening is um, the promotion stuff came out and I woke up the morning that tickets went on sale thinking, you know, I'm going to promote this again. And by the time I got up at six in the morning, I'm the, the screening was sold out mm-hmm. and there were already people asking for second screenings or new screenings in different cities. And that's, it's kind of crazy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm really excited. I'd love to be there, but I'll that just have to watch incredible. from afar. Yeah, that, <laughs> it's a shame you can't go out there to to experience that for yourself. That yeah, would be it would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, like one one of the things that when when James was telling me, so our, our producer was telling me that we were going to get to interview you. He did tell me that he he wanted you to talk at length about Johnny Goulash. <laughs> He's a character. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to know what inspired you to create uh, create Johnny, create the character. Well, Johnny Goulash came out of that time period when I, I wanted more work as an actor, as I was starting to take it more seriously. But mm-hmm. the, the, the roles weren't really coming. And I'm a, a weird actor anyway. Like, you know, th- there are people like, oh, I have this drama thing that I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, okay, mm, I'll, I'll pass uh, uh, it, not to speak badly of both those things it's just i'm not into it yeah. and um the the kind of acting i do is usually over the top silly violent crazy what you know whatever whatever i can uh do it's i'm, I'm not really a any kind of classic a- a actor which i'm sure is a big surprise <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at the time i wanted to do more of that kind of stuff and it just wasn't showing up so i started uh my own show called partially devoured movies mm-hmm. and uh, johnny goulash was the host and we would show movies that were usually hour and a half movies cut down to 20 minutes so i would edit the crap out of these movies to make them you know really really fast and watchable and usually a little bit more 
I mean, everyone's seen all the same public domain movies that are available for horror hosts to see. So it's, it was nice to do something different. Yeah. And, and the, the other thing that the whole idea of the character, um, w- one day I was just complaining to a friend. I'm like, Oh, these horror hosts they always show the same thing. And it's, it's, you know, you have, uh, um, a little bit at the beginning where they speak, then you have some of the movie, then you have a little bit in the middle and then you have a little bit at the end mm. and you got to, to see the new bits, you kind of have to watch an hour and a half of a movie that you've probably already seen 16 times. So I, I don't understand why they don't just cut up the movie and make it really, really short so that it's not as far between bits. And I my friend that. said, well, why don't, why don't you just do that then? I went, oh yeah. So Easy. That's sort of that's how it came about. <laughs> that's really cool. Cause that, that's something that, um, as I grew up in France and that's not really something that we, that we had on, on TV or, or available. It wasn't really done. And, um, when James was explaining to me what it was, I thought, God, I would have loved that. Like growing up, having yeah. something like that would have been really cool. So yeah, I, I loved all of that as a, as a kid. I mean, we, I watched yeah. Elvira of course, and, uh, a lot of local guys who would show horror mm. movies and just cut them up. And yeah, it's, it's always been fun. And, and here in both Canada and the U S there's just so many, like yeah. the horror hosts are all over the map, especially in the U S. Yeah. We don't like, even in the UK that they, they don't, it's not really a thing, which is such a shame. I think the only thing I can think of, there's a film critic that does something a bit like that called Mark Kermode who presents, um, he presents horror movies, but uh, it's really like, he'll just, you know, he'll just do like a little presentation at the beginning and then you show the film, often Japanese right. horror. So like, that's how I got to watch uh, The Ring. And that was, a, that was a big one for me, the original, uh, the original Ring movie. But it's like, um, I, I also, I wanted to know a little bit about, um, you've, you, we mentioned directors like George Romero and, and Lloyd Kaufman, but is there, is there anyone, uh, anyone else that you just, you'd love to work with maybe someone that makes the kind of movies that you're interested in. Oh, there's, there's lots of people, but you know what? We should go back to Lloyd Kaufman for a minute because I didn't really talk about him. And, um, I got, uh, again, really lucky that, uh, they decided to shoot some of, um, return to Newcomb high, Mm. um, in, in Buffalo, New York. And so it was close enough for me to go down and I, um, I auditioned, but didn't get a main role, but then I got, uh, I got accepted as just one of the Tromaville kind of people. And so, um, I would just start showing up at set. So the, the first day I show up at set, um, I, I got to drive this Barracuda car and I drove the, uh, m- main character, uh, to school and then she gets out of the car and I don't even know if that part's even in the movie uh, in the end but Lloyd said to me afterwards he did a really good job with that and thanks a lot but you know you you, you got seen pretty well so I, I don't know if you you know we can have you anymore in mm-hmm. the movie because that was a really good good shot for you and I said yeah no problem you know uh, if that's the way it is that's cool and then I show up the n- another day in a disguise. And um, Lloyd would look around the crowd and say, we need a few people for this. And and that guy, and he would pull me over. And after the first time I met him, I told him my name was John. And the second time he pulled me out of the crowd and said, what's your name? And I said, "Eh, John. Hmm? And I got to be in a third or fourth or fifth. So by the time we got to, you know, the eighth scene I was in, in a different disguise again, (laughs) and he called me out and said, what's your name? I said, John. And he looked at me and said, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> so, so after a while, that was kind of like the running gag. And I was just going to show up in a different costume. And so I'm in the movie many, many times, all as different characters. And what was well, great was I asked uh, Lloyd years later, I said, Hey, Lloyd, just, I, you know, I was in one of your movies a while back and it was great working with you. Uh, I got this idea for a, a cameo in Ouija Shark 2. Uh, would you be interested? And he said, yeah. <laughs> and so there is a cameo of Lloyd Kaufman in Ouija Shark 2. Oh, that's really cool. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what sort of it disguises awesome. are we talking? <laughs> is it like the fake <laughs> mustaches? <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's really cool very clever very, a very clever thing to do to make sure you're in are, are you have you what so are you in like lots of different scenes in that movie i am and <laughs> uh, again i i don't know how um how much you would recognize me there's a <laughs> one time i'm a um i'm like a i decided to be like a basketball coach and that's probably where i look most like myself i'm you know carrying a basketball and got kind of coach clothes on yeah, and there's another time when um, Zach Amico comes running into a, 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 a parent meeting completely naked, and there's reaction from the crowd to him being nude. And I came uh, dressed as an old man with a big fake mustache, and I got all these great shots, you know, reacting to his nudity, and <laughs> it was lots of fun. It was it was great that he uh, actually mentioned. I was listening to the um, the director's commentary and and some of the other commentaries on the disc for Return to Newcom High, and yeah. and he actually mentions at one point he goes, "Oh, there's John Miori. He's like a man of a thousand faces. He's in this movie like ten times." <laughs> so it was great that he even chose to mention me. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing that. Um... I noticed on your uh, on your uh, your credits, your list of credits, is that you you were in um were you in a Resident Evil movie? Is that uh, uh, Resident Evil? Yeah, as yeah. it's just it's just background, and yeah. um, I, I I I can see myself a, a few times in some crowd scenes, and in fact, when I first saw it in the theater, I was kind of really disappointed because I was like, oh, they they cut all my stuff out, and I was looking on the the one side of the screen where I knew where their camera was. I knew where I thought I'd, I, that I would be. Yeah. And, and I, I wasn't there and I went, Oh, well, I guess they cut me out. And then when it came out on DVD, um, I noticed they shot outside a pizza pizza and I didn't even see the pizza pizza sign. And then all of a sudden on the opposite side of the screen, I see what looks like a Zeke, a Zeke. I'm like, Ah, he flipped the frame. They and so then the I, I started, they flipped the frame, so they didn't want it to say pizza pizza. So now it l- kind of looks like a Zeke a Zeke. That's and so weird. Why there I am that? on the opposite side of the screen. Oh, there I am. So it's, it's they, brief, but I'm there. Why would they do that? Why would they flip the frame? That I guess. So uh, weird. I guess they just wanted it to look like. Uh, the characters were going in a certain direction maybe uh, yeah. for, for where they or I've actually heard that uh, in movies, you know, heroes travel from left to right uh, often and the villains go from right to left. It's something oh, that you can see okay. quite often. So maybe it was that. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. That's, that's I was really glad weird. I was there. <laughs> are you are you a fan of the, the Resident Evil franchise, like in general, like the video games? and? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I played the first game um endlessly until i was able to finish it and then i went well through the second game um the third all the ones that were playstation one and Mm. two i i i burned through all of them i think i finally stopped playing the games around i don't know resident evil 7 yeah, so, when they started yeah. to get very kind of, they ended up going in in a very different direction. I think it was Resident Evil Four, where they started getting very just shoot 'em uppy, and uh, yeah. less horror and no less, zombies. Yeah, no, no real zombies, just all kind of weird creatures. Yeah, which is a bit disappointing. But the, yeah, I, 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 mentioned that, I mentioned that because Resident Evil is a very, it's a very long lasting franchise. But honestly, mm-hmm. there hasn't really been a good movie. Has there? I, I mean, we had um, Return to Raccoon City, or Rac- I think that's what it was called, that came out last year. But I, I have heard it's not very good. <laughs> so, no. so, that's the problem. They're, they're not very good. But um, they're apparently, the Netflix series that's coming out, I think, tomorrow, apparently Ooh. that's very good. And, oh, uh, I, I hope so. Yeah, a lot of people have been uh, been talking about that one. So I'm quite excited as a Resident Evil fan. I am very excited to see that. Apparently, it's the best adaptation of the video game that they've ever done. And of the of the movies that, that they've done um, with uh, Mila Jovovich, yeah, um, I, I I always kind of saw them as 
a side story to the game story. It, yeah. you know, if you look at it like that, it's not so bad, Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they, they, it would have been great if they kind of tied them in. I do like it in, at least in uh, the one that I'm in resident evil apocalypse. I mean, at least they had raccoon city and they had yeah. some of the, some of the characters from the game in it. So it, it was probably the closest of the bunch to yeah, the game. It probably was, yeah. But yeah. it has. I, I did think that those those movies. I mean, I, I really liked the first one. That I I watched that as a. I was quite. I was probably too young to watch that yeah. movie. But I've got a bit of a. I know James knows this. I've got a, a bit of a soft spot for W. S. Anderson. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, I I really like Event Horizon. It's one of my favorite, one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. It's a movie I like yeah. to put on. And people are always like, "Why do you like that film?" I'm like, "I just." I find it really freaky and weird looking and I like those sorts of movies, which is why I think I'm attracted to to your kind of films as well. It sounds like you're right up my alley as far as yeah. a filmmaker's concerned. What was it well, like the, working with him? With? Uh, with um, oh, uh, to be honest, when you're doing background, yeah, you don't, um, really. You don't really interact with the, the director. You usually have, you know, someone an AD way down the list yeah. that tells you what to do. So, I mean, I saw him on set, but not really any kind of, you know, specific direction. The yeah. best at time that I ever got for that was um, on the first episode of The Strain. Uh, I'm in it as a reporter, um, kind of oh. charging charging one of the characters trying to get an, a, an interview. Yeah. And uh, Guillermo del Toro came over to me and said, you're doing a really good job and you really look good in the role of the reporter, but your hand's a little too high and, and the mic's a little over the actor's face too much. Do you think on this next take you could put your hand down a bit? <laughs> and all I could think is, on any other movie, some AD would come over and yell at you. Yeah. You, did, you did some. No, no, he came over. And was really, really nice about it. And I thought, oh, this is great. So I can, Im I can imagine him being really nice. Guillermo del yeah. Toro. Like, um, it, again, one of my one of my uh, cin like cinematic filmmaking heroes, Guillermo del Toro. That must have been a yeah. really, really cool. The strain. The strain. That was an interesting show because I watched the first season of that, so I must have seen you in it. But um, oh yeah, it's, you know those those roles yeah. are small and passing. You know, you don't. They're not meant to be remembered. They're just meant to be, you know. Yeah. Move the story I, forward. I, li I like I like um, listening to Guillermo del Toro talk about movies, and when he he often talks about. So this is a manga that you probably know about, which actually involves a shark. As, mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but Guillermo del Toro has spoken about that so many times, and he wants to make it into a movie. So I think you should try and send him um, <laughs> Ouija Shark. <laughs> Too, and be like, I, I, I read. The, I'm gonna have to send you the manga, like uh, uh, the the name of it afterwards. But it, it is brilliant. It's very famous. I'm blanky on the name now, um, but uh, I think that that will probably be up your street. It's a bit weird. It's a bit freaky, but it's it's some good stuff yeah. there. <laughs> I, I do love some horror manga. I love all the Ringu movies. You mentioned yes. the uh, Ringu uh, uh, manga. Pardon me. Uh, you mentioned the movie earlier yeah. that they did here. Uh, I love the movie too. And um, do you know uh, Uzumaki? That's that's it. That's, that's yeah, the that, one. I love one. Uzumaki. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's the one. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to remember the name, and I could not remember the name. Um, but yeah, I got I got that for my brother for for Christmas, and he 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 was like, "What did you buy me?" <laughs> he's like, he read it. He's like, <laughs> I, I love it. It's great. Is, he loved yeah, it as well. But it's like, this is very weird. So that, that if if they could ever do that, I'm pretty sure uh, that might be some. Would that be something you'd be interested in trying to adapt? Okay, absolutely. Yeah. There is a there is a Japanese Uzumaki movie. Yes, and it, there is. It's really odd. It's yeah. really freaky, and it's it's good. But I'd I'd love to see Del Toro do a. You yeah, know, he was talking about a North American long, version. Yeah, he was talking about it for a long time. But this is somebody that he. he I, I remember him talking about um, Ideo Kojima. He's very good friends with, I think. And he was like, he's someone that likes to get high on his own supply. <laughs> and I was like, he's like, I like those people. And so, and I, it's true. You, you like people that like to talk about their own work with passion. And that's, uh, that's what sure. I, 
that's what I definitely get from you as well. It's obviously you're very passionate about what, what you do, which uh, well, you, you have to love working on this indie micro yeah. budget level. I mean, there's, there's no money. There's very little in the way of fame. It's, you do it because you you like it and yeah. you hope to capture a few people out there that feel like you do and you know you get to get to you know do what you love so mm. yeah it's it's uh that's what it's got to be about if you're if you're working especially at this level yeah yeah definitely so so what are you working on next is there anything you can talk about yeah there's a there's a few things there's uh um i'm I'm acting in a movie called Massacre at Femur Creek. It's yes. uh, from director Kyle Heitinen. Um, Kyle put out um, a short called Massacre at Femur Creek, I don't know, around 2014. And, um, and I was the killer in that one as well. And we had a great time. And uh, I'm just glad that now that he's doing a feature film version that he still wants to work with me and still wants me to be in it. So um, it's great. I received the script and, um, as the killer, I don't have any lines. So it's basically going to be, I'm going to show up uh, on set and he's going to point and say, you know, kill, 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 <laughs> you know, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, so there's that. And, um, I'm working on a, like a paranormal dinosaur movie right now. Um, okay. it's only got a tentative title. So, I won't mention that, but uh, we're deep into production. I'd say I've probably got about 30 minutes of the movie shot, and um, that's going well, and that's going to come out from Wild Eye releasing as well. That's cool. It's not, it's not, Jurassic, it's not Jurassic World 4, is it? <laughs> <It's> no. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> even like the porn version of Jurassic World 4. It's... <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant and um a little lower (laughs) yeah (laughs) and when can people expect to when and where can people expect to watch um ouija shark 2 sorry ouija shark um uh, august 4th in tokyo um hopefully i'm i'm hoping to have uh, a local premiere here in hamilton maybe sometime in august uh, Mm -hmm. after the tokyo one and then after that, I, I do hear, I can't say, but I do hear it's going to show up at a few festivals worldwide, which is nice. Awesome. And then it may not be until after the new year before it gets released on DVD. Okay. Is there, yeah. are, there any, are there any festivals in, uh, in France you might be coming to so I can go and see it? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> you got it out of me. <laughs> Which one? Um, I don't know the exact name of it. I actually just heard about it, like ah. the, from the distributor the other day. So um, well, you, you got to let me know. I'll go. I'll go down. I'll, I'll get. I'll get accreditation, and I'll go down. That'll nice. Yeah. I'll. Yeah. I'll. I will let you know. And uh, once I once I know more details too. So it's, it's just a few things. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us, John. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, it's been great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.